Good day to everyone. My name is Ariel Paolo Biligali, a teacher intern in College of Education under Mrs. Marietta B. Padadua. For this video, we will be learning about the behavioral learning tool. So let's go. Do you remember your high school days? Particularly in joining in intramural games like basketball, chess court, or maybe participating in quiz be like math quiz be or science quiz be? Some of us are maybe excited in that advanced course. This is to exercise our skills and compete with other students. But before someone will go to participate in that event, he or she must undergo training just to be more familiar or master that specific area. Today, we will talk about the theory that relates to these circumstances. This theory is called connectionism. We will also know the types of laws and how to apply it in real life situation. So what is connectionism? Connectionism theory was made by Edward Pondai. He was born on August 31, 1874 in Williamsburg, Massachusetts. He was known as an influential psychology who is often referred as founder of modern educational psychology. Connectionism is closely related to the word connect. This connection between stimulus and response is called a stimulus response band or an SR band. The stimulus and its response are connected in a person's mind like associating chocolate cake with truly. The stronger the SR band, the better a person has learned that lesson. It is the association between impression and impulses to action, neutral connection between stimuli and responses. This should be based on the act of learning principle. Learning is achieved when the individual can form association between a particular stimulus and a response. There are three laws of learning and connectionism. They are the law of readiness, the law of exercise, and the law of effect. These learning are a series or set of responses can be linked together to achieve a goal. The first one is the law of readiness. The law of readiness is a series or response that can be chained together to satisfy some goal which will result in annoyance if blocked. So it means that individuals learn best when they are physically, mentally, and emotionally ready to learn. And if they do not learn well, if they see no reasons for learning. For example, the student have a strong purpose, a clear objective, and a sound of reason for learning. They usually make more progress than students who lack motivation. Ready students are willing participants in the learning process, which makes the instructor's job easier. The principle in law of readiness are these. The first one is, when someone is ready to perform act, to do so is satisfying means that doing or performing things whatever it is when you are prepared and ready for it it will produce good result the second principles are when someone is ready to perform some act not to do is so unknown him. imagine you will be assigned to speak in many people you prepare for it practice for it and for many times so that you will deliver the message very well then suddenly they will cancel it or maybe the program was scanned for some reason no it's it's very annoying the last principle in law of readiness is when someone is not ready to perform some act and forced to do so it is annoying no one will do things that they are not ready or prepared for it. Even professionals sometimes do not accept that kind of things because without undergo practice and preparation will result in things. For specifically, the law of readiness suggests that a teacher can only instruct a student 
if that student is willing to be educated. When student does not show any signs of greediness, a teacher should provide instruction that will help a student develop much like old age when a student is ready, the teacher appears. The second law is the law of exercise. The law of, the law of exercise frequently made association become strength when likewise or sporadic association became weaker. The law of exercise stresses that practice makes perfect and prominent when taught correctly. Those topics most often repeated are easiest to remember when first things most often repeated are best remembered. Students do not learn complete tasks in a single session. Repetition consists of many types of activities, including recall, review, restatement, animal drill, and physical application. For example, learning to drive a car, start writing, singing, and memorizing. We cannot learn those things in a single session. We need to undergo in many practices to be better on it. There are two types of laws of exercise. These are the law of use and the law of disuse. The law of use states that the learning is strengthened when with repeated trial or practice. And the law of disuse is the opposite. This says that learning is weakened when trial or practice is discontinued. Connections grow stronger when used and grow weaker when not used. For example, the more you do something, the stronger the SR band and the easier it becomes. Jan is a teacher in a private school. Jan's students are struggling with learning their multiplication table. They cannot remember if 2 times 2 is 4 or 6. If John has them practice their multiplication with flashcards every single day and make an extra effort giving time practicing even after the class, they will get better and better at it until it's like second nature to them. The SR bond between seeing 2 times 2 and remembering the answer is 4 is getting stronger. The principle in law of exercise are this. Practice without feedback does not necessarily mean enhanced performance. And practice alone is not enough for improvement. We need feedback from others like the professional or expert in a specific field you are practicing with. Because those feedback will tell us if we are doing it right and if we are doing bad. People say that practice makes perfect. But we should evaluate of what kind of practice we are doing. We should say that good practice makes perfect. The last law is the law of effect. Learning is strengthened when accompanied by a pleasant or satisfying feeling. Learning is weakened when associated with unpleasant feeling. Learning takes place properly when it results in satisfaction and the learning derives pleasure out of it. An individual response to a specific situation followed by a reward will eventually make those responses stronger. Therefore, the responses become habits when the individuals with the particular situation again. Additionally, if a response deters an individual from achieving a reward or a rewarding state, then this response thus becomes weaker. The law of effect involves the emotional reaction of the learner. Learning will always be more effective when a feeling of satisfaction, pleasantness, or reward accompanies or is a result of the learning process. Think about it. Jan has a student who gets good grades when she studies. Every time she, good, she gets a good grade after studying, the SR band is strengthened, and the students learn even more that studying results in getting good grades. On the flip side of that, 
Every time that students get a bad grade after not studying, the SR band between not studying and good grades is weakened. The students learn that not studying does not result in good grades and is likely to not study in the future. Can John do things in his classroom to help strengthen the SR band and use the law of effect to his advantage? Absolutely! For example, he could reward effort as well as outcomes so that struggling students who work hard get a reward for his work. He could also punish bad habits so that a student who does not pay attention gets detention or something like that. According to the law of effect, his students will be more likely to work and less likely to not pay attention if she does those, those things. The principle of law of effect is positive outcomes result repeat behavior. Responses to situations which are followed by a reward states of affairs will be strengthened and become habitual responses to that situation. In turn, that theory, there are four key principles. First, learning involves both practice and reward system is based upon the law of effect. Second, stimulus and response association can be linked if they are part of the same action sequence. This is based upon the law of rhythm. Third, transfer of knowledge and learning is based on situation that had been previously experienced by the individual. Last, intelligence determined by how many of these association had been learned and or acquired. In conclusion, students learn best when they are physically, mentally, and emotionally ready to learn and we need to apply motivation before we teach because learner does not learn well if they see no reason for learning second students can learn more and be a, be good of a particular things when apply good practice and ask feedback from the expert last student learning is strengthened when accompanied by a satisfying feeling or result in our spiritual life, we are nothing without God, even if we practice for so many times and work very hard on it. Because without help from expert and professional, we cannot do nothing. But if we ask and depend on God, which we believe He is the most professional and expert in all areas in life, we can do all things as what the Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. God basically telling us that we can do not just one, two, or three, but all things through Him. So let us always abide in that. So that's all for our video today about Connectionism by Edward Honda. Thank you for listening and see you again for the next video. God bless and goodbye.